Hello, and welcome to this 500 ADAT quick tutorial on configuring 500 ADAT as Clock Master or Clock Slave. When integrating 500 ADAT with your audio interface using optical connectors, it is critical to ensure that the clock settings of each unit are set up correctly to achieve clean and glitch-free audio. By carefully considering and assigning which device is the clock master or slave, you can have a direct impact on the conversion quality available from your studio. In this video, we're going to run through the process of configuring 500 data as either the clock master or the clock slave of the system, as well as discuss the pros and cons of each method. Clocks are critical components in any device that feature AD and DA conversion. Poor clock performance with high jitter means that the converted audio features unpleasant and unnatural distortion. As an example, this is an approximation of what a 10K sine wave would look like if it was recorded through a converter and clock with extremely low jitter. And this is another 10K sine wave recorded through a converter with clock jitter performance of five nanoseconds. All of these artifacts, whilst low in volume, can add up and have a subtle impact on all audio recorded and played back through the system. If you read the spec sheet of a range of devices, their clock jitter performance can vary wildly. What is less documented, however, is that the clock jitter performance on any device will change depending on if it is the clock master or clock slave of a recording system. Good ears can even detect differences between two high-end clocks, as even a small amount of extra jitter can cause a lack of phase coherency and unnatural qualities when multiple tracks are stacked and mixed in a DAW session. Found today that's clock jitter when it is set as the clock master is less than 0.5 picoseconds, which rivals the most elite external clocks on the market. When 500 ADAP is set as the slave, it listens to the clock timing information from the connected clock master and recovers its own clock in sync with the system with six picoseconds of jitter. This RME UFX2 has clock jitter performance of 800 picoseconds when it is the clock master and less than one nanosecond when it is using its recovered clock and set as the slave. It's worth noting that this is excellent performance for an audio interface. However, other interfaces can feature worse jitter performance in both scenarios. In the following examples, we are going to connect 500 data to this audio interface as both a master and slave device to compare performance in both scenarios. To configure 500 data as the clock slave, we need to connect the optical ports of 500 data to the audio interface ensuring that inputs are connected to the outputs and vice versa. Next, we need to configure 500 ADAT to sync its internal clock to the timing information incoming from the ADAT input. To do this, we need to configure the rear panel dip switches and raise dip switch 7 to the up and on position. Then we need to use dip switches 1 to 4 to assign the correct sample rate on 500 ADAT. In this example, our recording sessions are set to 48k and so we will need to raise dip switch 2 to the up and on position. On the interface itself, we need to launch the control panel software and ensure that the clock source is set to internal and the sample rate is set to 48k. This means that the interface will generate its own clock without outside influence. With this setup, we are achieving 6 picoseconds of jitter on 500 ADAT's clock and 800 picoseconds of jitter on the interface's clock. The disadvantage of this setup is that 500 ADAT is not utilising its internal clock to its fullest potential. However, the advantage is that you can use the interface without 500 data connected, without any reconfiguring. To configure 500 data as the clock master of the system, we need to raise dip switch 5 to the up and on position and ensure that dip switch 7 is down and off. Next, using the interface's software control panel, we need to configure the interface's clock source to ADAT and the sample rate to 48k to match what we have set on 500 ADAT. This enables the interface to sync its internal clock to the timing information incoming from the ADAT input. With this setup, we achieve less than 0.5 picoseconds of jitter on 500 ADAT's clock and less than 1 nanosecond of jitter on the interface's recovery clock. The advantage of this setup is that we achieve the best overall conversion performance by minimising clock jitter in the system. The disadvantage of this setup is that you will need to change the dip switches on 500 ADAT to match the current project sample rate. As a quick note, in the future, it may be possible that 500 ADAT auto detects this sample rate and or is controllable using a software control panel for Mac and PC. This has only been a quick tutorial on configuring 500 ADAT as the clock master or slave. Clocking is a vast and quite complex topic, so please check out the links in the description for more information and useful resources. 
that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and check out the other videos in the series for more tutorials.